<laughs> we ran into a totally unexpected problem there. As I said before, we were scrambling in looking for stories uh, that were in public domain that we felt were good stories uh, that also could be adapted within our budgetary limitations and that were public domain. Uh, so in the course of that, though, that search, uh, that, that continuous search, we went to some Russian writers like uh, Pushkin, Chekhov, what's the other, Tur Turgov, Turgo, I can't remember. Uh, even uh, Tolstoy had written some short stories. So, and they were public domain. So we started uh, bringing in writers because we were using many writers uh, to stay ahead of the game which it, it continues to this day when you do a weekly series on television, which I did subsequently. Uh, and all of a sudden, then the agency was asking us for advance information about the stories we were doing. And finally, uh, we came to the time when we said, well, we're now our next uh, three scripts are by uh, Chekhov and Pushkin and Tolstoy. That, that may not be the order, but it was roughly that idea. And the agent said, oh no, oh no, you can't use Russian writers. And I said, why not? And they said, well, uh, well uh, uh, that's communism. And I said, these were writers who worked long before there was a Soviet Union. They are without question regarded as historically as classic writers and uh, there should be no reason not to use them in our panoply of uh, writers from around the world. But the agency, and this may have come, and I don't know, I, I suspect this, but I have no proof of it, it may essentially have come from American Tobacco Company. Uh, no Russian writers. And this became a fiat. Uh, there was no way around it. We had to abandon the scripts we had started work on. A couple of them were finished. A couple were in development and give them up and now start scrambling for replacements. So uh, the same thing applied on that first series for television that applies to any series on television to this day, scrambling for scripts.